Welcome to a tutorial video on Unity 2023. In this video, I'm going to cover some simple enemy movement. So across a number of videos now, we have been slowly expanding our knowledge of how Unity works and incorporating different C-sharp programming concepts into our game mechanics. Right now, we have two different scenes. In Unity, a scene is a way to divide up a game. The game objects we create, our cameras, our characters, or whatever, are part of those scenes. We have scenes and they hold game objects. There's lots of different systems in Unity, rendering, audio, lots of other things, and game objects get information and give information to those systems via components. We attach or give components to game objects that then get information or give information to those systems. And we see that within Unity as starting over from the hierarchy view, when we click on a particular game object in a scene, and we see a list of, in the inspector view of all of its corresponding components. And we've seen now how we can work with things like the physics system by adding colliders and adding rigid bodies to particular game objects within a scene. We've also seen that we can work across scenes. We now have two different scenes. We have a menu scene and a sample scene. Sample scene is the default name it gives us. So we can move across scenes, but we have a little bit of problem when we do that. As we saw in the last video, when we're moving across scenes, we're losing those game objects that were part of the last scene. We load into a new scene, and we have new game objects, which also have corresponding components. Now, a type of component we have is called a scripting component, which allows us to write C-sharp code that affects game objects within Unity when we play a scene. When we have that code, that code, because it's part of a component, which is part of a game object, also disappears. And so what we added in the last video was the ability to maintain, through a static class in C-sharp, data across scenes. So in this video, let's talk a little bit about enemy movement because we want to start adding more complex mechanics and in future videos, multiple scenes and the ability to move between levels. So we have a main menu and in a future video, a game over scene and the ability to kind of move between based on various things that are happening in the game. To get there, we can add scripting components that have C-sharp files. And when they have C-sharp files, this affects the corresponding game object. And we saw this with our red square, which because it has a collider and a rigid body and the corresponding code, we can move it around. So what we want to do is we want another game object to move without us giving it direct input. We're going to write some code that's going to have it move, and then we can kind of shape that code in future videos to make it a little more complex. But at least in this video, let's talk a little bit about just simple enemy movement. So we have an existing game object, this one right here, this circle that is currently colored black. What we want to do is we want to move it, which means we need to add a scripting component, which of course has a C-sharp file. So I've clicked on it in the hierarchy view, coming over here in the inspector view, add component, down here, new script, and I'm going to call this enemy. And create an add. So we have a scripting component right there, right after it loads, and we now have a file called enemy, which I'm going to go ahead and pull up in Visual Studio. So as this is pulling up, we're interested in doing something a little different with this particular enemy. We want it to move, which means we need to worry a little bit about positions. So within many game engines, and Unity is among this, there are concepts called vectors. We previously saw a vector 3, an X, a Y, and a Z. If we're just interested in X and Y, it's a vector 2, two things, an X and a Y. But we want multiple collections of things. That is, we want one X and a Y, and another X and a Y, and potentially another X and a Y. So if we're dealing with those, we probably want some type of structure for our data. One of the data structures available in c -sharp is called an array. In programming terms, an array is a collection of data where the sequence is important, and the sequence starts at zero. So we have zero, one, two, on up to however many things are in it, which is called its length, the number of things in that collection. 
The other thing that makes an array special is we access things within the array based on its position or what's called its index. So starting at zero, we can access things in sequence because the order is important within the collection itself. We're interested in creating an array of positions using vector two, an X and a Y, that then when we set up this code will allow the code to keep cycling through the sequence of things. It will get to the end and go back to the beginning and then go to the end and come back to the beginning and just keep going through it. Or what we might call a kind of patrol pattern or patrol movement. So let's go ahead and start to make that. So we're gonna need an array. So remember, whenever we add fields within C Sharp, we have a number of ways of different accessing it. We have, by default, private. That is, whatever field we add will be private to that class by default. We can also explicitly make it private by adding the word private. We can also make it public, which means, as we saw when we added the static class, other code and Unity can access it. And we also have a special option available when we work with Unity in C Sharp. That is, we can serialize the field such that the class has it and Unity has it. We don't really need all of those things right now, so I'm going to explicitly make this private for just right now. And I'm interested in what type of data this is, and I mentioned vector2, so something that has an x and something that has a y. And I'm going to use open and closing square brackets, and I'm going to call this positions. So we have some type of variable, positions, which will be an array some point in the future. This is what the open and closing square brackets is, and it's going to contain things that have x and y, or vector2s. In the start method, I'm going to go ahead and say positions is equal to a new vector2, 2. And the two within the square brackets right here on line 13 says it will only contain two things. That's the maximum size. In the future, we'll create things potentially that can grow on its own. But right now, we're just saying it's going to have up to two things. So let's go ahead and define these two things. So I'm going to say, here we go, if I can type correctly while talking, position zero, the first thing in the sequence, is equal to, and everything in this collection, in this data structure, in this array in C Sharp, has to be the same type. So new vector two. And when we create a new vector two, it needs to know an X position and a Y position. So how do we get that? Well, we know that game objects within Unity all share a special component called transform. So in fact, if I go back to Unity real quick, when we click on just about any game object, it will have something called transform. Even Canvas has something called rec transform. So we have transform everywhere. In fact, Unity anticipates that we there will be situations where we want to go ahead and access transform instead of doing this, game object transform. It assumes you probably just want transform. In fact, we saw that with game object destroy, where we can access things via game object, or we can just simply use destroy or instantiate or transform. So what are we interested in? Transform position, okay? Transform position X and transform position, oops, wrong key, position, y and i want this this movement to move up first plus three let's do this again positions one this is the next thing in sequence starting at zero moving to one is equal to new vector two transform position x and this time transform position y minus 3. So we now have two entries in this array. The first entry is the same position that transform position starts at, it's just plus 3 on the y axis. The next one is the same thing but minus 3. So it's going to move up and then it's going to move down. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. File, save. Now, 
We want to drive this movement. To do that, we're going to need two different methods and to understand how vectors relate to each other in space. So one of the two methods we can use is part of vector two, and it will give us the distance between two points. We say, how far is it between this x and y and this x and y? That will allow us to know if we are very close together. That is, if I'm moving towards something and the distance between me and my target is very close, some small number, a decimal number, or what C sharp calls a floating point number, is very, very small, then I'm probably on top of it. In which case, do something else. If I'm not, I want to move towards it. In fact, that exact method exists within Vector2 as well. So we want to know the difference between two points, and if it is very small, then we want to move towards that point. So if vector two distance, and what are my two distances? Well, transform position, my current position, and now I need to know what's the current thing we're going after. So I've talked about arrays having an index, right? how we get the information. So we're going to need some type of variable to keep track of this. So I'm going to explicitly make this private, although keep in mind it will be private by default. And an integer, I'm interested in just whole numbers, and I'm going to call this position index, and I'm going to set its initial value to zero because arrays start with zero. So zero right here means zero right here. So, what is our two distances? Well, distance between transform position, the current position of the game object, and positions at position index. So, how far away is whatever the current target is based on position index and my current position? If it is greater than some small number and you can make this however exact as you want, but generally something like 0.1f, then do something. And again, keep in mind, we use the f to signal this is a decimal or a floating point number in C-sharp. So now we want to do something. And this is where we use vector two, move towards. Well, what am I moving towards? Where is my current position? Where is my target? And how fast am I moving? So, same thing again. Hey, transform. Position, what's my current target? Well, my current target is positions using position index. Okay, now how fast should I be moving? Now, we saw when we worked with input that we understand speed, velocity, within Unity as being part of time delta time. Time delta time is that tiniest bit of fractions between frames. Sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's a little, because Unity wants to run at a very consistent frames per second. And to do that, it needs occasionally to move things a little bit slower, a little bit faster to keep things consistent based on lots of different factors. We don't really care what those factors are, we just need to know what was the difference between last frame and this current frame, or what's time delta time. So I'm going to say 1f is our current speed, which is fairly slow, times time at delta time. And we previously saw this when we looked at this, the speed of things we were moving around. Now, move towards is a little bit tricky if you're not used to using it, because move towards will seem as if, right here, moves a point current towards target, except it doesn't actually do that. So let's go ahead and file save. And if you were using this method for the first time, you would think you're done. You're not, and I'm going to show you why. So let's go ahead and play. Hmm, well, we don't see any errors in the console, but uh, this isn't moving. So what it does is it doesn't actually move it. It just gives you how it would move it if it was moving it, which is generally a little confusing. So what we wanna do is say, take what comes out of this, transform, position is equal to the result of this method. So whatever this is moving towards based on the speed, based on the current position versus, uh, versus the target position, just go ahead and set it to this. So file, save. So turn back to Unity. 
give it just a second to reload. And there's our movement to plus three. So notice it moved at one times time delta time right up here to plus three. Fantastic. So now we want to move to minus three. Well, we have a pretty good way of going about that. We know we have two positions, and we know that if it's if the distance is greater than some small number, we're still moving towards it. So let's say here, else, else. So if this is not true, I'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit. This is not true, then we need to go ahead and move to the next position in sequence. So let's go ahead and say, hey, position index is equal to position index plus one. Go ahead and increase it by one. But we need to be very careful here because we only currently have two things in here. In the future, we might have three or four. We could have a million different things in here. But we can't access something that doesn't exist within the array. This is known as an out-of-bounds error. You attempted to access something that the array didn't know about. So we need to double-check something real quick. Hey, if position index right here, if it's ever, whoop, there it is, greater than positions, and then here's where we use something called length. So if this is ever greater than the number of things in this, minus one, then go ahead and set position index to zero again. This seems a little bit confusing, but keep in mind this starts at zero right here, zero and one. So position-wise, this will be one, but length-wise, there's two things in it. So we're interested in if this index number right here, if we add one to it, we ever get two minus one is greater than this right here, the, the last position in it, then go ahead and set it back equal to zero. In other words, if you're at the end, go back to the beginning. So now, if we go to File and Save, just to double check, it will move towards something, then it will stop and move the other way. So which is to say, we will move plus three and then minus three. Plus three, moving at one F, minus three, using one F. Moving down, moving right back up again. Plus three, boop, right back down to minus three again. So what have I created in this video? I've created some simple enemy movement. Now it is fairly simple, but the ideas behind it, the concept behind it, is a patrol pattern, which could be used in many, many different situations. In fact, let's just make this a little more generic right here and help us out a little bit. So maybe we don't want 1F to be consistent. We might in the future need to change the speed of things. So let's go ahead and make this a speed right here. So float speed. And I'm going to change this to speed yep. right here. OK. But I don't want any other files, potentially any other data, other than Unity to access this. So remember, by default, this will be private. But if we make this a serialized field, Unity can access it. So file, save. So I have speed right here, which is private. Notice it's implicitly private. But I want to go ahead and access it in Unity because I might want to change the speed. Maybe I want it to move faster in the future. So in which case, I need to click on circle one right here and come over to speed, which will be assumed to be started in zero, but let's make it like two to start. Let's go ahead and play. Yeah, two's a good speed. Yeah, okay. So what if we want to adjust the range? Well, we could potentially do that too. We could set up the same thing I just did, but a different serialized field and adjust this right here as a variable, in which case it could move up and down. Potentially, we could move every direction in sequence. We could move up and then down and then left and then right if we wanted to do that. 
or we could move in kind of a rectangle or any other pattern we want by adding different positions. But at least for right now, let's go ahead and keep this serialized field. So let's quick review what I've talked about in this video. To create simple enemy movement, we can create kind of a patrol pattern, but to do that, we need a data structure within C Sharp. In this video, I used an array. An array is a sequence of values where the position is important. So the position is accessed an array based on its index, starting at zero in C Sharp. So we created a zero and a one, each of which was a vector two. In C Sharp, a vector two contains an X and it contains a Y. We use the transform component in Unity because it has the position of the corresponding game object the scripting component is attached to. So we always know where that game object is by accessing its transform position. So by getting the transform position plus or y plus 3 and y minus 3, we create a kind of yo-yo pattern by moving up and moving down by creating a, a patrol that uses vector 2 distance and vector 2 moves towards. Vector to distance gives us the distance between two different things, two different vectors, this xy and this xy. And we said as long as it's greater than some small number, 0.1, but we could have made it smaller if we wanted to, then move towards. The trick when using move towards within Unity is then we want to go ahead and right here assign it back to transform position. So we're moving at the normal speed between some current position and some target position, and then once we get to that, which is to say this is no longer true, we increase the index by one, but we need to be very careful that we don't accidentally get an out of bounds error. So we're interested in length, which is here is two minus one, gets us the last thing of whatever it is. So zero and one in this case, in which case we start over back to zero. Or put another way, whenever we get to the end of the sequence, go back to the beginning of the sequence, which in arrays in C sharp is back to zero. So move to this position, then move to that position, keeping a constant speed right here is now in this example, a serializable field, which means we can change its value in unity. And that gets us all through simple enemy movement. We have one enemy, one obstacle, as part of our ongoing mechanics that can move up and move down, but potentially in the future could move in other directions. But we, we will revisit that in a future video. So at least for right now, we've got some simple enemy movement as part of our ongoing project in Unity 2023. Thanks for watching.